Hey everybody, welcome to Alum House Sound. My name is Dave, and today we're going to talk about the difference between an aux bus and a matrix fed sub. All right, so previously I did a video, I'll link up here as well as in the description, and that video talked about using a matrix to feed a subwoofer. That's taking all of your mix that goes into your main left and right bus, sending it to a matrix, and that matrix feeds your subwoofers. Now on the matrix you've got the ability to use EQ and things like that to where you might not need any additional DSP or digital signal processing outside of the console. And that's a great way to just have one fader that you push up and your whole mix turns up, uh, top cabinets as well as subs, you push the main fader down, you get the same thing. Now there's a different way, in fact, two different ways we're going to talk about in this video about using stuff inside the console to get a similar effect, but it's going to be considered an aux fed sub. So what an aux fed sub is that makes it different than a matrix is that you send only the instruments you want or the inputs that you want to go to the sub as opposed to taking your entire mix, sending that into uh, your, your main bus and then that feeds all of your speakers, including your sub. We're gonna send your main mix to your top cabinets, and then we're going to send just the low frequencies or inputs that you want down to your subwoofer. You can do that in one of two ways, and so we're gonna dive into the console and talk about this. The first one is going to be using the mono center channel, which is built into the console, and then the second one is going to be using a mix bus. All right, so to get started, we're gonna dive in and use the mono center channel feature. So the easiest thing about this is that it's similar to a mix bus. So where we would normally select a mix bus over here and then we can hit sends on fader and that gives us the ability to uh, build a mix and then when we go off of sends on fader, it goes back to our house mix with this selected we come back to our mix. So that's the easy way to uh, impact a mix bus. And in a similar fashion, what we can do is come down to the bottom uh, layer on the right hand side, which is our matrix layer. But we also have this one special guy over here, the mono centered channel. Notice that these are purple and this one is white. And so what we can do is select this just like a bus. We can hit sends on fader. And now we have the ability to unmute and then add in these inputs that we want to go just to the mono center channel. So just like a bus, you're building a mono uh, miniature mix. Now the MC does is more commonly referred to as the mono center channel, and you get to decide if you want that to be uh, a mono channel or a center channel. In this case, we're gonna use it as a subwoofer feed. So let's say we've added our bass guitar or our kick drum into this mono center channel, we would then bring this up to Unity. This would be a overall volume control for this bus. We can turn sends on fader off. Uh, this still is, is not gonna be impacted by the sends on fader. And then what we wanna do is come up to the screen. We'll deal with the routing and also making sure that it is linked to the left right mix so that as we are actually mixing more likely on something like this with our DCAs we don't have quick access to that but we want to be able to turn this up or down and impact our entire mix including the subs and if we needed to make any fine tune changes we could just come to the mono center channel fader turn that up if we need to because we need more bass always anyway we're going to come back to the DCAs, and so let's jump into the screen up here. All right, so taking a look at the screen here, what we're going to do first is make sure that the level, the volume, overall volume of our mono center channel follows the master fader. So we're going to come into setup, and we're on the global tab. Now we'll use the arrow key here to go over to the config tab. And what we're going to see under link preferences is the last one here, which if I use this, if I, let's see here, come down here, it's mono center master level follows left right level. So I can click that and make sure that that is checked now. And that's going to make sure that 
on the mono center channel, again, regardless of the level that I have, if I turn the master fader up, then that is also going to turn up the sub level, or the mono center channel level. It's not gonna move the fader, so it's kind of like a DCA in a way, but it is going to uh, impact the level overall. And the biggest concern with that is that when we turn the main fader down for any given reason, that our subs get turned down as well. So that's the first thing we wanna do is make sure that that setting is turned on. And the next thing we're gonna do is look at our routing. So the next thing we wanna do is coming into the routing channel and we're going to go over to the output section so we've gone past XLR and we're into the outputs now. And this is where we're going to look at what is set up as, as our 16 outputs on the console. And in this case, we can use the first encoder to come down and we can check all these. And depending on the console you're using, seven and eight are, are gonna be your, uh, your main outs on the smaller platform like I have here, the compact, the producer, and the rack unit. If you've got the full console, and you would come down and you would see that 15 and 16 would be your, uh, your left and right outputs. But for me, because I have the smaller platform and I wanna keep things tidy, seven and eight are my, mass, my main outs, left and right. So I'm gonna to come to output six. I'm going to come over here and use this encoder to go to main LRC. And then I can use the third encoder to find main MC. Finally, we do want to have uh, the capability that we have volume control, so do make sure that your tap point here is set to post fader. So now I have output six on my console is set up to feed my subwoofer, and the mix that's going to that is the mono center mix. Now lastly, if we go back to the left and we look at XLRs, if I'm using XLRs here, I can confirm that uh, XLR6 is my, uh, my mono center channel. And if I'm using a stage box, you would go back to either AES50A or AES50B, depending on the one that you're using, and make sure that your outputs are set accordingly for what you want on your stage box. All right, so our second option is using a mix bus to feed our aux sub. And again, this is going to be similar to what we just had, but this uh, is a slightly different approach to it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a mix bus. Now, in my normal scenario, I've got six monitors that I'm using. So I've got the first six mix buses are set up for that. Uh, I've got other things going on. I want to select a mix bus that's not being used. So in this example, let's come down and use mix bus 12. We can select that. And if you really want to get fancy, you can come to the setup tab. We can go over to name and icon. And for right now, we're just gonna change the color of it so that it stands out to us. That'll be our subwoofer color. We can also go ahead and bring this fader up to Unity. And then uh, in a second, when we do our routing, we'll make sure that this fader will actually impact our, um, our volume of our subwoofer by making sure that the tap point is set to post fader. So I'll come back to the home screen. And now at this point, just like any mix bus, we can have that selected. We can hit the sends on fader button in the middle of the console. And now we have the ability to decide which, uh, which inputs go to this mix bus. So maybe this is my kick drum, maybe this is my bass guitar, and I just wanna send those two into my subwoofer. And so I've got that set at the mix bus 12. And when I go back to deselect sends on fader. Now I'm back to my normal mix for my house. So with this case set up, you're going to be able to build a, a mix. You can send inputs over here to your mix bus. And then let's talk about the routing to make sure that this mix bus specifically uh, lives next to our left and right mains and will go out to, uh, out to our subwoofer. One of the things we do want to look at here on the mix bus is to make sure that our inputs are set to post fader coming into this mix bus. To do that, we select the bus, we go to the home screen, and then we page over to the config tab. And here in the, uh, the configuration settings here on the far left, uh, we can see that post fader is selected. 
Uh, if it's not, if it was set to, say, pre-fader, uh, then with, regardless of how much you turn up or down your inputs, it will not impact what goes to your subwoofer, and that could be an issue in your mix. So we're going to leave that set at post-fader, and that way you have uh, good control of what's going into your, uh, your subwoofers to make your house mix sound great. One thing to keep in mind, you may choose to use a DCA to control this because when you are mixing, let's say that we're on our top eight channels here and then we're on our DCA layer here uh, to be able to control other inputs, you may choose to have a DCA to be able to adjust your volume control because if you turn your, uh, your mains down, that mix bus is still up and the mix bus is still going to be kind of pounding away with your subwoofer unless you turn down the, uh, the inputs or you mute your inputs. So if we had one and six as our example, uh, then we wanna make sure that those get muted or because we're set up to post fader, we can turn them down and that will impact our mix. So to set up the DCA, just to have that quick access control, if you're not familiar with this, uh, we can go ahead and go to the setup. I always do this first. Then I'm going to select the DCA and confirm that it's over here in the viewable window. Now I can change this to be the color that I want. That just happens to be the color of the mix bus that we used as well. But it, it becomes eye-catching. You can obviously change the picture and do some fanciness with that or change the name. But this is a good start least change the color. Now what I'm going to do is click the home screen and I'm going to go ahead and deselect the DCA and now what I want to do is come to the left side to our mix bus. We want to find the mix bus by going to the bus masters. Now on the smaller platform I've got two buttons here and ours was bus 12 so I can select bus 12 here uh, sorry select the layer to be able to view bus 12 and now by holding down the DCA button, I can now select bus 12, and that way we know that this DCA will control the volume of our bus now. Another way to check this is if we go away from this layer to a different one. If we press, then it will show us over here what our, what our DCA is controlling. So we kind of get this cascading uh, layer effect here so that we can quickly view and see what the DCA is controlling. All right, well, that's a quick look at these two different ways to set up an aux bus for or an aux sub uh, to feed your subwoofers. Now, we talked a little bit about the pros and cons, and the first one, the mono center channel, is usually going to be the best way to go. It's built into the console, and if you're not already using that for a true center channel, then it's kind of an available bus that you can utilize and it's set up to post fader similar to how uh, similar to how you would want to have a, a true mix bus set up as well and you've got that quick button you can select to make it follow your main left and right fader so that's really your best bet but if you still want to uh, to utilize a true mix bus then you've got that capability and we talked through setting up a DCA at the end there to be able to have quick access so that if you need to move things up or down you can do that. The biggest example and headache there is if you turn your mains down your sub is still kind of blaring away unless you bring that mix bus volume down some other way or you mute your input. So things to keep in mind, go ahead and play around with it for you, for your setup and your venue and see what works best for your setup. If you've got questions, go ahead and put those in the comments section down below. I'm always answering questions. Love helping you all out. And if you want some one-on-one -on -one help, if, you're, if the videos are good, but you just can't get that one last bit set up in your environment, feel free to uh, check out the, the link here or in the description, which is gonna be to my website. You can fill out the contact card there and we can start a conversation outside of YouTube and get you the help that you need. Well, that's it for this video. We'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.